Hi everyone, I'm Linda Maxey, also known as Library Lynn, and today I'm going to do the booktube newbie tag. Question number one, why did you start this channel? I'm a retired librarian and I, I love reading, particularly nonfiction, and I think that that's something that tends to be neglected. Anyway, I have written two books. One has already been published and one is with the editor right now. I was wondering about how to get the word out about my books and one day my husband said, well, why don't you start a YouTube channel? And I thought, I can't do that. Um, for one thing, I have a terrible voice. For another thing, I'm hopelessly shy. For another thing, I'm so introverted, I can't think uh, when a camera is pointing at me. But for some reason, the thought just wouldn't leave my mind. So I decided that uh, after a while that I would give it a go. And once I started thinking about it and doing research about it, I came across the Nonfiction November booktube tag. And um, that's how I discovered a book olive and that opened up a whole new world of booktube to me that I had not been aware of before. So that's how I discovered booktube last fall. So to answer the question, <laughs> I began this channel to get the word out about my books but I've discovered some delightful booktubers on the way and I think I'm really going to enjoy being part of this community. Question number two. What are some fun and unique things that you can bring to BookTube? Well, during my decades of work in libraries, I did a lot of book talks and I really enjoyed doing book talks. My favorite part of my job in the libraries was picking out books for the patrons that I served and trying to connect readers to specific books. So on this channel, I plan to do mostly book reviews and book talks because it just makes me happy and it's what I know. But I'm also open to doing other kinds of videos as well. One day I may get up my nerve to do a vlog. I don't know. I'm very self-conscious, so I may not be able to pull that off. But I can definitely do some videos on my book collections and different things, and I'll talk about that a little bit more as I go along. Right now, as I was mentioning before, I am scripted and tight, and, and there's a reason for that. It's because I I am so introverted that when sometimes I, I'm like this, even when I talk to people, I'm okay. I have great thoughts and all that, but as soon as a camera is pointed at me or as soon as several people are looking at me, every thought flies right out of my head. It kind of reminds me of um, if you're of a certain age, you remember in elementary school, teachers used to send students out at the end of the day to clap erasers together or smack them up against the side of the building to get the chalk dust off. And then sometime in, I think in the late 70s, they came up with these cool machines that you could just run the eraser right over the top of the machine and it would suck all the chalk dust out. Well, that's what a camera and, and a group of people looking at my face tends to do to me. It just sucks the thoughts right out of my brain. So that's why my, that's why my videos have been so scripted. I'm hoping to get better at that, but I think it's going to take some time. Okay, one more thing I'm going to add right here. I, I like to read and talk about good books, and, and by good books, I mean well-written books. I don't have to agree with the information in a book to think it's good. I just think it needs to be well-researched and well-thought-out and well-written. Just for this channel, I am going to try to stay away from books that I don't care for. I mainly, if, I, if I'm talking about a book, even though I am going to bring out negative things for me about those books, if I talk about the book at all, it means I like it and I'm hoping that somebody else will read it and like it too. Question three, what are you most excited for about this channel? Well, I did start it as a marketing effort. And um, as I mentioned, making videos is new to me. When I made videos for my previous jobs, I always had help with the editing. Matter of fact, I never did the editing. Somebody else always did it. So um, this has been a little bit scary, but you know, after I've started to get into it a little bit, I've realized that it's really fun. Question four, why do you love reading? This is a big one for me. I've always loved books. Um, my parents used to read to me when I was really little, and my mother enrolled me in a book club. The, um, if you're older, you might remember this from the 60s, Dr. Seuss books, and you would get one a month. And so you would get books by Dr. Seuss and, and various other people. P.D. Eastman was a big one. So we got Go Dog Go by P.D. Eastman. Are You My Mother? I, I loved those books. And my dad was a big Louis L'Amour fan. So he read a whole lot when he was not working or not out working in the yard. 
And I always understood that. I always thought, you know, reading was the greatest thing ever. And I love to learn. When I was uh, in fifth grade, I, dis I discovered Leonardo da Vinci and decided that I wanted to be like Leonardo when I grew up. I wanted to be the smartest person in the world, which of course never happened. But I did get the idea pretty quick that reading was the fastest way to learn things. Question five. What book or series got you into reading? The first book I read to myself that was a fiction book was The Boxcar Children, and it's really an odd thing. Um, not too long before I found that book in my school library, my mom had told me that when she was in elementary school, she had found a book about some children who were orphaned and went to live and found an old abandoned boxcar in the woods and lived in it. They went to the dump and found dishes and things like that and took care of themselves. And I thought that sounds really neat. Well, not long after that, I found that book in my school library and I took it back to class. And when I was finished with my class, classwork, I sat down and started reading it. And that was the first time I ever realized that I am reading this. I'm reading it to myself. I can hear the words in my head. I'm reading, I'm doing it. You know, so that was the first time. And although I didn't actually get hooked on that series, from there I went on to, to read a lot of other fiction books. And the first book that got me started on nonfiction, I was really bored one summer day at my grandmother's house and I found a book on Harriet Tubman. And when I read it, I just could not believe that that was a true story. I couldn't believe that things like that really happened, that, um, that Harriet was so brave. I couldn't imagine doing the things that she did. And I think it was just the fact that this was a true story that really got me started reading because I was like that, you know, there's, there are a lot of interesting things in the real world that I don't know about. And so I really wanted to find out about those things. Question six. What questions would you like to ask your favorite YouTubers? Okay, I have a series of three questions for this. The first is, how do you find time to do everything? How do you find time to, to read? Because that's a time consuming activity. And I'm sure you all are as busy as me with chores and family members and different things like that. How do you set aside time to read? The second thing I would like to ask is, how do you choose the books you read? Do you like to just go to libraries and, and glance around? Do you like to read certain book reviews? What's the method that you use to choose your books? I always find that really interesting. And the third thing is, um, I love to learn about people's bookish lifestyles. So what's the thing you enjoy most about being a book reader? Is it the discovery of new books? Is it actually sitting and reading books? When you read books, do you like to curl up in a chair with a blanket and your cat and a cup of tea? Or do you like to go out and sit in the backyard and have a cigar and a glass of bourbon while you read? I mean, everybody's different. And I just think those kinds of things are really interesting. Number seven, what challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be hardest to overcome? It's going to be hard to find the time to make the quality of videos I would like. Editing takes a lot of time and it's also going to take a lot of research into how to do different things. So I think it's going to be a while before I get comfortable with my editing and and I would, I'm also a little concerned about making videos that people actually want to watch. You know, I've, I've mentioned earlier that I was a school librarian and well, and I've worked in all kinds of libraries. I've also done adult programming. I'm very comfortable doing book talks. But other than that, I'm a little bit unsure of myself when it comes to other topics. So if you have any ideas for me that you would like to see me do, let me know. I would be happy to give most anything a try. Number eight, when did you start reading? I really started reading in elementary school. After the boxcar children, I discovered Nancy Drew and Trixie Belden, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And then when I was 10, my parents gave me Little Women, and that was a real game changer for me. I loved that book so much. I read it over and over and over again. And every time I would read it, I would do it a different way. Sometimes I would read it and it would just be, you know, I would read it just straight out like a narrator looking at the story from the outside. Sometimes I would read it and pretend that I was Meg. And then I would read it again and pretend I was Joe. And then I'd do it the same thing again with Beth and then Amy. And I would just repeat that over and over and over again. And I really think that got me through middle school because it gave me a chance to get out of myself and to, to realize that there are different ways of looking at things. You can be in the exact same situation and look at it from different perspectives. So I feel like I owe Louisa May Alcott a lot. Question nine, where do you read? Well, it would be easier for me to answer where don't I read, but I have very specific habits about this sort of thing. 
When I finish my day's work, I read nonfiction on my couch in my living room. When I get up in the morning, I read spiritual books on an upholstered chair in my office. I read either fiction or children's books before I go to bed at night and occasionally poetry, but not, not quite as often. And then I have a Kindle and I keep business related books on that. And I read that whenever I'm out and about running errands or waiting at a doctor's office or something like that. So I've always got something to read. And I usually am reading about four or five books at a time. Question 10, what kinds of books do you read? Okay, well, I read just about everything. I have worked in public libraries, elementary libraries, and high school libraries, and I have always tried to read things that I thought I could recommend to the people that I worked with. So when I worked in children's libraries, I read mostly children's books, and I read them to myself as well as reading them to classes. When I worked in a high school library, I spent a lot of time reading YA books and all kinds of genres just because I wanted, you know, high school students have a reputation for not wanting to read. I found that that's not really Really so. A lot of them do like to read. They just don't want their friends to know about it. But anyway, I, I wanted to be able to recommend books to my students that I knew they would like. That was, that really brought me joy. And then when I was a public librarian, I read pretty much everything. But when I was in college, I was um, an English literature minor. And so I had to read a lot of books. I, I, I read widely and I enjoyed every single book I was assigned except Moby Dick. And I only read two chapters of that. And then Took a bad grade on the test, but I'll go back and read Moby Dick one day. I think maybe I'm mature enough now to sit down and actually absorb that. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with Moby Dick. And then also I discovered my college library. There were all kinds of books that I had never had access to before. So in my spare time in college, I read things like Gagol, who I just thought was hilarious. Diary of a Madman. If you've never read it, read it, you really should. I discovered Lillian Hellman there. I discovered uh, Wuthering Heights. I just enjoyed reading those things. Because I think partly because I didn't have to take tests on them and I could just let my imagination run wild. But since I have retired, my my reading interests have changed quite a bit. I've, I was kind of nonfiction starved for a long time, trying to read all these books to recommend to other people, and I didn't generally read nonfiction for that. So now I've started reading books I really like, and I like spiritual books. So since I've retired, I've read the autobiography of a yogi, which I I thought was mind blowing. I've read a, the, the entire, um, I think the entire H.A. Almas books, um, his entire collection, and, and there are quite a few of those. They're really excellent, but pretty deep. I've recently discovered Paul Levy and his Wetiko books and the one on quantum physics and how that relates to consciousness, and, and I just think that's amazing too. I've also, since I retired, started reading literary fiction. I've discovered Donna Tartt, Somerset Maugham, and uh, Thomas Wolfe, which I had never read any of his books. He's a wonderful writer. I mean, it's just, just amazing. My favorite kind of books to read, honestly, are books about books. I always have liked books about books. And Nicholas Bespain's is one of my favorite authors in that genre. He's written A, a Gentle Madness, which is about people who collect rare books. And I recently finished Patience and Fortitude, which is a, a history of large libraries um, and rare books libraries and rare book bookstores and it, it, book collectors too. It, it just covers the gamut. It's a very large book and I loved every word of it. And then one of my favorites in that genre is A Thousand Books to Read Before You Die by James Mustich. That book is just so amazing. I mean, it really is filled with great books and he does children's books, all kinds of genres, nonfiction. He does everything. For years, he was the editor of the um, catalog called A Common Reader. And if you don't know about that book, find it in your library and you'll be amazed at what you find there. The last question, what does your book collection look like? All right, this is going to sound like maybe I live in a mansion and I most certainly do not. My house is very small, but I have two sons that are both grown and gone and I have appropriated their bedrooms. The bedroom that I'm in right now is my youngest son's bedroom. It's downstairs and this is where I keep the books that I have read within the past year. In my oldest son's bedroom upstairs, I keep my to be read pile and there are approximately 50, 50 to 60 books in that right now, all kinds of books. And I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to stop buying books just because I have 50 or 60 lined up. I'm going to keep buying them because it makes me happy. And then I have my office and that's where I have my business reference books, which I just enjoy reading. And I also have uh, my spiritual books in that room. 
And then in my living room, I have a glass bookcase that my mother-in-law gave me. It's It's got my treasured book. It's got my vintage books. It's got uh, my copy of Little Women that my parents gave me. It's, it's, it's got, you know, the books that I really treasure or that might be worth something one day. And then in my kitchen, I have an entire cabinet full of cookbooks. And then also scattered around the house, we have a few books that belong to my husband. He's also a reader. But unlike me, he gets most of his books at the library and takes them back, or he gets them used, and then he passes them on to another used bookstore when he's done. He likes to read thrillers and books on sports for the most part. So that's an introduction to me and my channel. I'm really looking forward to getting to know you all. Please leave comments below and let me know if there's anything that you would like to see me do or anything that you would like to know about. And as I can get to it, I will certainly be checking out your channels as well. So until next time, Happy reading.